<laughs> trying to hold my tripod please don't fall over hello welcome back to the channel my name is Kaylin. in today's video we're going to be making some reusable stencils with our silhouette cameo yay <laughs> okay so we are going to be using some acetate uh, for today's video and i have gotten the frosted acetate is this the frosted one i don't think i think that's the one i had on my bed over here but anyway that is not the frosted one wait a second this is the frosted one so i got this from pna i saw it there i quickly grabbed it and i always need acetate for something um so these are actually used as they're used for binding so when you bind a book and they put that clear a plastic cover on top that is acetate so that's what we're going to be using today you can get this in your local office supply store or your local stationery shop they do sell it there and the reason why i'm using acetate is because it is reusable if you are going to use uh, stencil vinyl it's not going to be reusable um so if you're doing like a one-time thing it's completely fine to use reusable not what? It is completely fine to use stencil vinyl if you're just doing it once off. But if you want to use this over and over again, say you're doing like a scrapbook thing and you want to use your stencils over and over again, acetate is the way to go. So I think that is all I needed to say. If I did miss anything, I will put it in the video. But I think that is all I needed to say. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start our project, we're going to need a stencil pattern or some sort of artwork to create our stencil. So I went over to sofanti.com. And then I'm just going to type in stencil patterns and then you'll see a whole bunch of stencils come up. You can use whatever design you want. You can also get stencil patterns at designbundles.net or creative market. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and purchase this one uh, with the butterflies and roses. And you can see that the file comes with many different formats and an SVG is included. All right, so over in Silhouette Studio, I am gonna bring in the designs I just purchased from Sofonsi. But before I do that, I do want to change my media size. So this is really important. I do believe that I'm not actually sure um, if Silhouette has brought out their own brand of acetate sheets. I know Cricut has, um, but I'm not sure about Silhouette. Uh, so I suppose if you have the Silhouette brand, you would use uh, a 12 by 12 inch. I'm not too sure though. I have... <laughs> I like I literally have no idea um, so but my media size is a4 so I do need to change that and I'm going to open the page setup panel to do that and then my media size is going to be set to an a4 and that is the space that I have to work with so that is really important uh, just make sure that you do that okay so I'm ready to bring in my design so I'm just going to click on file and then merge and I'm already in the files that I downloaded. So um, this is the SVG over here. So I'm just gonna click on that and I'm gonna click on OK. And that is going to bring in all of those designs. So I'm only gonna be cutting out four stencils today. So I'm not going to use these last two over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. And then I'm going to change the size of each of these. So I want my stencil to be 14 by 14 centimeters. Um, and I found that I can fit two on a sheet if I do it at that size. So you can make your stencil whatever size you want. Uh, so I'm just gonna do that for each of these. So I'm gonna change this to 140 by 140 millimeters and that is equivalent to 14 by 14 centimeters. And then I'm just gonna do that for the rest of these. Okay, so now my stencils are the correct size and I'm gonna go ahead and place these on my cutting mat. So I first want to cut the roses and the butterfly. So I'm gonna put these here over to the side and then I'm going to just place these on my cutting mat. Um, so I'm gonna place it, I don't like to place my designs right on the cut border. Um, I like to leave a little gap. And then I'm going to put this one here as well. 
and then that should be fine so you'll see um i will probably move when i go to cut out these two i will move one over to the side because for some reason p a has put like a bunch of numbers here on the side and i don't want my stencil to have those numbers on it it just i feel like it will look really unprofessional so I'll probably just move the one over to the side. Uh, but yours might not have that on it. I don't know why they did that. It's kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, it's okay. So let's go ahead and just place these correctly. Okay, so now we're ready to cut this out on the Cameo. I'm going to click on send here. And then um, I'm just going to, what I like to do normally is just select over my entire design. I just make sure that it's set to cut. So it is set to cut, that is fine. And we are going to use the default settings for the acetate sheets that Silhouette Studio has already set up for us. So I did tweak these settings when I initially did this. So I changed the blade over here to six and it didn't work. Um, it didn't cut through like butter. It did cut it, but it didn't cut through like butter. So I kind of had to pull the acetate apart and that is not something you want to do especially if you're doing uh, stencils you want the design to be intact and straight and just look uh, really good um, when you're pulling things on acetate it can bend and distort so that is not something that we want so you do want your stencil to cut like butter um, so we're going to be using the default settings. So the blade is set to 10. Uh, that is a bit, I, I felt like that was like really excessive when I first did this, but it actually works. So, you know, whatever, we'll just go with it. And then uh, I set the force to 33 and then the speed, well, the default is set to 33 and then the speed is at three and the passes are set to two. So now that that is ready, we're going to go ahead and cut this on our cameo. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and put my acetate onto my cutting mat. So I am using a 12 by 24 inch cutting mat. Um, it's really big for this project. Um, and I only re realized later on that I could have actually put two on this cutting mat, two acetate sheets, but it's fine. Um, so I am using this one. My other cutting mat, the 12 by 12 inch is really dirty and it's also lost its tack. So I just wanted something that had a lot of tack. So over here, I'm trying to show you that I'm just trying to line it up really well and just get that straight. But the mat was really big, so I had to kind of just lay it down. Uh, but once that is done, you'll see me in a second just run and get some sellotape because I just want to make sure that it doesn't move while it's cutting. And then once that is done, I will load it into my machine. So um, when I did load it, it kind of pulled the mat backwards and forwards. I think it did it like four times. And I'm not actually sure why it did that. Um, I don't know if it was just to check if there's enough clearance at the back for the mat to move in and out. Um, I don't know. But if you know, let me know. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and let the cameo do its thing. I'll probably do the next two stencils off camera. And yeah, then we'll be ready to uh, weed our designs. Okay, so that is done cutting. And now before I unload my mat, I always check if my material is cut first. So you'll see me here. I'm just going to lift the acetate up just to make sure that it is cut through. Once I see that it's cut through, then I'll just go ahead and unload my cutting mat and then we are ready to weed the design. So I'm just going to quickly show you here what it looks like um, when it's not weeded um, compared to 
when it is weeded <laughs> and I'll show you that in a few minutes um but it already looks so stunning and I was so excited but I knew that I had a lot of weeding work in front of me um I chose the most intricate designs for this video and I don't know why I do that all the time I always just make such complicated stuff um but it's okay I think in the end it turned out really beautifully so but yeah I'm just taking the sellotape off my cutting mat um I'm pretty I don't like sellotape being stuck on my cutting mat and just that's just the kind of craft I am I just have to get all that stuff off and I have to make sure that all of it is off like none of it's left on there I don't know if you guys are the same but I'm pretty much I don't know like I'm OCD that way but anyway um so in a second eventually <laughs> I will show you what this looks like and it actually turned out really really cool so some of the pieces will stick on the cutting mat that is fine so this is what it looks like when it's not weeded so we do have to just take our little tool and just uh, weed out all those little ex extra bits um and this took a really long time to cut a solid 40 minutes just for these two designs which is hectic so if you're making stencils just uh be prepared to spend time on them um and i just i think obviously the more intricate the design the longer it's going to take so if i had chosen a simpler design it probably wouldn't have taken that long but it really did take a long time to cut so just be prepared for that so this is what the stencils look like when they are finished and they're they've been weeded out oh my gosh it is so stunning i absolutely love how this came out it took me a really long time i'm not gonna lie to you it took this project just for the cutting and weeding took me about three hours um to do this but obviously the more intricate your design is the longer it is going to take as i said um but every second was worth it they came out really beautifully so i am going to go ahead and test out my stencils now so i'm just using a watercolor pad here and then i also have a piece of acetate sheet that i'm just going to put some paint on because i don't have a paint palette so i just thought i'd use that and then i've obviously just got a little foam brush over here and then i'm just going to lay down some acrylic paint and then dab my foam brush in there and then i'm going to lightly dab it onto my stencil so you don't want to wipe it over the stencil or brush it over the stencil because you will uh, lift up and bend some intricate pieces so um, just lightly dab it you'll see me do it here in a minute um, I just lightly dab it and that is all you need to do when you're applying paint or anything like that or even distress oxide i think distress oxide would have worked beautifully on these stencils but i didn't have any of that lying around so i just used some paint So over here I'm going to lift up the stencil and voila <laughs> it looks so beautiful now I am going to go and wash it quickly I just wanted to show you how cool this is um so all I did was I quickly just ran to the bathroom rinsed it under some water and that was basically it uh, I didn't use dish liquid or anything like that if your stencil has been standing with paint on it or anything for a few days then you might need to use some dish liquid but I just used some water and it worked perfectly fine. And there we go. It's as good as new. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this for the roses as well.
and this brings us to the end of this video that is how simple it is to make stencils on your cameo thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next craft video bye Thank you.